Most four dual chucks over 10 inches in size have T-slots machined into their front face. Although they are a useful feature, it is one that is seldom used. In this video, I'll show you one very easy use for this feature. G'day, I'm Steve-O, and welcome to the Outback Shed. The T-slots are suitable for attaching fixtures, one of which can be used to set a completely accurate reference for machining parallel parts. This simple chuck attachment will allow the machinist to remove the workpiece from the chuck and mount it on a mill table with complete confidence of accuracy. The fixture consists of a height block and a T-nut for each slot. The height of the block is just higher than the face of the jaw's first step. There are two additional threaded holes for the installation of risers which can then increase the height to allow the jaw's second step to be used thus increasing the diameter and size of the workpiece that can be held. The chuck should have a socket head cap screw installed at the outside extremity of each T-slot as a safety feature to prevent the chuck from ejecting the fixture. Some of the video I will be showing here dates to before I started my channel. That footage was shot on different cameras with different lighting. It was filmed during the period when I was experimenting with cameras and lighting. That footage, unfortunately, is not up to the normal channel standards. Here I'm milling the height block from a piece of my steel bar. I'm just using a high speed steel end mill. I don't have coolant set up on the mill currently, although making chips is fun, the swarf is certainly not user friendly. After cutting the T the whole length of the block, I'll relieve the end that will sit on top of the chuck face. The remaining part will locate into the T-slot and the chuck face. It's the same process for the two nuts. Here I'm just facing them to length. Here 
Each height block has two counterboard 8mm holes for mounting them to the T-nuts and an additional 2x8mm threaded holes as features for the addition of any future risers. Now to present day filming. As you can see I've used these blocks before and they have previously been skimmed. I'll put them into some bluing solution to finish them off. There's approximately 6.5mm difference in height between the block and the bottom face of the chuck jaw. The initial measurements show that the blocks are within a few thou of each other, but they will still need skimming prior to use. They will also need re-skimming every time they are fitted. The chuck jaws must be removed from the chuck prior to skimming those parts of the blocks that will support the work piece. I'm using a 32mm boring bar to do the facing.
Another check with the dial gauge and the accuracy is confirmed. Now the jaws can be reinstalled into the chuck. I have an offcut of aluminium which is 200mm in diameter. I'll set it up on the chuck using a live centre fitted with a pressure pad to ensure good contact with the height blocks. Then I'll face the plate and chamfer the end. Turning the plate around, I'll bring the pressure pad back into play to ensure firm pressure on the blocks. Again, I'll face the plate and shove for the end.
Measuring the plate with a micrometer in a few places show that the plate is parallel. I can now mount this plate on the mill table and have confidence in the accuracy of any features I may wish to machine into it. If, for example, I wanted to machine a chuck back plate, I would normally remove the chuck after machining the spindle mount, then transfer the chuck with the parts still attached to the mill table, then bore and thread the holes for the camlock studs and keeper screws. That's okay for smaller lathes, but for this lathe, a chuck can weigh upwards of 50 kilos, or almost 80 kilos for a 400 millimeter chuck. And that makes life difficult and poses some risks that are to be avoided if possible. These height blocks are easily made and are a useful addition for forge jaw chucks that have T-slots. They make further machining operations a lot easier and a lot more accurate. For subsequent uses, the height blocks will need to be reskimmed each time they are removed and reinstalled. They don't need to be re-blued. The faces can simply be coated with marking out blue and then reskimmed. The removal of all the blue from each block will indicate that they are ready for use. Again, a socket head cap screw needs to be installed at the outer edge of each T-slot. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and liking. Be productive, be creative, but most importantly, be safe in your shed. Catch you next time.